Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about parallax interior shaders using an OSL script inside of Houdini and Octane. This is based off a script by Julius Ely along with other contributors to take a 3x3 tiled image to simulate an interior space with parallax. The original version didn't quite work with Houdini and Octane, so I modified it a fair bit to work within the limitations and quirks, but also expanding its capabilities to be a bit more procedural and a bit more powerful when working with larger data sets. And with that, let's get started. First, let's create a simple grid. Set the size two by two, rows as well, two by two. Set the orientation X by Y and reverse that so that the plane is always facing Z positive on that axis. Let's add a UV unwrap. Spacing down to zero, scale to stretch. The reason we want to do this is because the shader is expecting a perfectly squared off UV zero to one. In this way, regardless of the size of our window, we're solid. Next, we want to add our material node and assign our material. I already have one prepped for us. Then we want to pack it. Now, packing is part of instancing that we need to do to get this to work correctly. This will lock in the perspective so that regardless of the orientation, it will parallax correctly. Uh, any deviations from this in terms of orientation, it will not work. So keep that in mind. And let's add our output and we're good to go. Before we get into shading, let's go ahead and change our pack geo instancing to on and ID to color. Heading over to materials, let's go ahead and add a material diffuse and our OSL texture node. Let's pipe that into diffuse as well and load up our script. We should find this in our OSL folder, window box H octane. That's what we're looking for. Compile and there we go. Now we have quite a few settings. Uh, we'll get to all of them in a moment, but first let's load up our color and alpha maps and this should get us the basic image. So first let's load a texture image RGB and an alpha image as well. For this, I'll just use the example one I've included in the file, our alpha, there we go. And now if we drop down the IPR, we should be able to see something happening. Yeah, so this is what we expected. So it's not projecting, that's fine. We just need to add a projection node called projection OSL UV. If we apply that to both, it should do the trick. If we move around, you will see perfect parallax. Now, let's go through these settings. So color alpha, you could probably figure out Z up axis. Now, if you want to orient your window initially so it's facing upwards, so it's a Y positive, you could do that by deselecting Z up axis. Flip flop, pretty self explanatory. You can flip it, you can flop it. Room depth will increase the size of the room calculation. Set that to one. Tile count and tile assign, we will get into. Um, this is for creating multiple images in a single shader, so you don't have to have dozens of shaders if you have a dozen of different textures you want to add. So we'll get to that in a moment. Window aspect is interesting. It's calling for the ratio of your geometry to help calculate your parallax correctly. If you don't get this right, you might see some weird skewing. Geometry that is more narrow than a square will have a value from zero to one. And of course, wider would be greater than one with no real upper limit. Next, we have the disable left and right wall toggle. Um, this is handy 
when you want to enable and disable your corners. Something you may have noticed with other executions of this in the past, you will typically have walls where you may not want them, uh, where you expect to see a glass, you know, in the corner of a building. This will help you toggle that. Disable back wall, just a simple toggle that normally you leave on. And then corner right and left target values are also to kind of help with that corner assignment. And we'll get to that in a more complex shader. The slices, you would have noticed, you can add up to four slices in one of these images, uh, four mid-ground elements, which you can, of course, position with this later. This is going to be clamped to your room depth. So you can have this all the way out and it will kind of clamp to the maximum value. Then finally, we have the remap section. This will help when bringing in color attributes from SOP level into your shader. Due to how Octane works, you will be limited to zero to one values. So this will help extrapolate that back to its original state, which we'll get into in the proper shader. All right, let's check this out in practice. Head into our complex shader node graph and zoom out a little bit. And we have a building already ready to go. Let's focus on our sourcing. Like before, we have simple grids, but this time we have three of them in different sizing. Small, medium, large. All with their own window ratio values as a attribute. To get the parallax correct. We also added a name attribute to help with the distribution and we're packing them as well, transferring window ratio and the name attributes. Heading inside the for each, we're gonna skip most of this. Uh, feel free to dive in, take a look, see how it works if you're curious. Uh, but we're doing a simple copy to points based off the name piece. Uh, we're doing some kind of in out Boolean operations to make it a bit easier to, uh, you know, get it distributed correctly, doing a bit of flush action. Now, importantly, I'm grabbing the two ends of each kind of section. This allows us to assign a corner attribute. Since we are limited to RGBA for our attribute sets, uh, one vector and a float, or in this case, four floats, I wanted to use just one attribute to get the corners assigned, not two. Uh, though that would have been much easier to apply. So I'm actually creating um, one attribute with two different values. Uh, right now it's 0.75 and 0.5. These are arbitrary. Uh, they could be any numbers between zero to one. I just need to make sure that they have unique numbers so we can target those values inside the shader. And then for the rest, we just have it set to zero since that is the default. Now, <laughs> the other reason why we have the name attribute, uh, we are creating a random attribute called room assign. Um, since we have three different sizes, we have images designed for uh, non-square spaces, kind of medium, large spaces. This is a way of targeting those values of the images that we do want. So in this case, you know, 11 to 15, we've got just the largest of images um, and so on. Now we uh, transform it back to its original position, and here we go. Now, as I mentioned before, we need to remap all of these attributes uh, down to our color. So we need to make sure, you know, there's 1 to 15 uh, room assign, and we get that down to 0 to 1. Same with the ratio. I have this room depth remap. I, I created an attribute just for the room depth, but I decided we didn't quite need it or, um, you know, I, I could have used an alpha attribute for that, but I, I wanted to leave that open uh, for something else. So we set our three attributes accordingly. Um, and the rest is just bringing in the other geometry, uh, you know, our facade, our base, our uh, floor. And for geometry, that's it. So let's look at the shader itself. All right. 
Now here is the full shader. Let's go ahead and check the IPR, see what this gives us. And it should load correctly. Yep, there we are. Here's the full building with several different kinds of images and different sizes and different orientations. And with the see-through corner. Unlike the simple shader, this time we're using UDIM texture nodes. Uh, this way we can bring in a grid of images instead of just a single one. Inside the shader, we target the UV space that Pile is on in the UDIM grid, and that's how we assign different images per interior. The shader is expecting a single column of UDIM textures. However tall you need, however many images you have, can only be in that one column in the first position. Down to the actual OSL, you see our tile count is set up to 15. Now if we drop this down to one, we just have the one material. And we can drag this up all the way up to 15. And then of course, if you go beyond that, you will get gaps. But you want the tile count number to match your UDIM tile. Now down here, we have our CD attribute that we are grabbing by the texture instance color. Um, to get this, if you're not familiar, you need to go to your Octane installation folder, your install path, to texture, your text folder, then the RGB4K underscore map.ppm. This will grab the color value from your instances into the shader, which is how we're going to be mapping all of our attributes. Um, I like to split this up with the channel pick, so RGB. Um, and this will correspond with the attributes we want to map. Now red, we have going to our corner control. So into our disable left, our disable right. Um, to target that correctly, uh, these values are normally set to one. Um, as you see, we get some strange results. So you would think you would simply select, you know, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, like the attributes are set to, but it's a bit hacky, actually. You need to go a bit below those values and um, really trying to feel it out to get it to work correctly. Um, I believe that does it. Yes. So in this case, we're going far below those two values, um, but that's the only way I found it to work. Um, depth position, again, Feel free to set this however you like. Um, I believe curtains is slice number two. So I like to have that pretty much all the way up front. Most of these images will only have two slices included, but many more will have all four. And when you make them yourself, go to town, do whatever you like. Now, as you see here, this is what happens when we disable our aspect. So if you remember, we had three different sizes, um, one, two, and three. So minimum one, maximum three. Enabling that remap means we get the correct parallax per image. As you see, we actually duplicated the OSL node. Um, same values, except we change the output type to alpha. Um, now, these OSL nodes can only output RGB, not uh, RGBA. So we needed an additional node to just output the alpha. Then we are multiplying a polygon side. Um, this is Octane's way of addressing the backside of your normals. When you have um, geometry with no depth, you will have a backside and adding the polygon side to this will allow you to um, mask that out effectively. Something else I noticed, um, with these particular images with the shader, if you are not using a mission, um, they are brought in pretty dark. Um, if I just actually cut this, yeah, you'll see this is pretty much pitch black. Um, if we enable the color correction and bring it up, 
about 100, you can start to see the image. So in case you see uh, darkness and you don't know why, just try brightening up a bit. Uh, the shader might make it a bit artificially dark. Um, let's bring this back with the emission. There you go. So yeah, we're just targeting, uh, we're piping in the alpha into the opacity, having a bit of emission, um, and that's it. Uh, the only other thing we're doing is we're adding a random color to a few of the attributes. I believe we're just adding it to our flop. So this will randomly um, flop some of the tiles to add a bit more further variation. And that's it. That is the basic rundown of this shader. Um, there are a bit more things I would like to do with this. Um, all of these green colored parameters means you can add a color texture. So you can add a random color, you can add a, um, an attribute, however you need. Um, I want to add that capability to the enable slice and the back wall. Um, it doesn't quite work at the moment, so that'll take a bit more uh, tweaking. Um, and I would like a cleaner solve to get the corners right, but in the meantime, that is the only way I've gotten them to work. With some creativity, you can do some mixed materials with the alpha attribute and have a daytime, nighttime transition sequence built into this. Um, really, you can get as complex as you want. Um, and as you see, this works from pretty much all angles. The OSL and this project file is available on the Gumroad link for free. Um, please comment, please let me know if there are any things uh, that you like to change or any problems you run into. I'm happy to assist and help out. Soon I hope to do a tutorial on how to actually make your own parallax maps for use with the shader. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, so that should be a much quicker one. But that's it. Thank you for watching and I hope this was helpful. See you next time.